Christ is risen. Early on the Sunday morning, the first day of the week after the crucifixion, before dawn, Mary Magdalene, who has been a witness to Christ's death and burial, comes to the tomb only to find that the stone has been rolled away. At first, it seems she's on her own. She alone is named. But later, she describes her experiences using the word we. There are other women with her too that early morning. In the alternative reading in St. Mark's Gospel, St. Mark says that on Saturday after sundown, the women buy spices to anoint Christ's body. Early on Sunday morning, they go to the tomb. It is a dangerous task, risking being identified with the man who has been executed publicly Shamefully, imagine them scurrying through the back streets and city lanes, creeping outside the city walls, hoping no one is awake yet or sees them in their secret mission. But when they get to the tomb, the stone has been rolled away and the grave is empty. Mary and those women rush back to tell St. Peter and St. John they fear someone has taken away the body. But the tidy way they find the folded wrappings and rolled up shroud shows the body has not been stolen. They believe, yet they do not understand. They return home without any explanations. But Mary returns to the grave. In her grief, she sees two angels in white sitting where the body had been lying one of the head and one of the feet. They speak to her, and then she turns around and sees Christ, but only recognizes him when he calls her by name. Peter and John have returned without seeing the risen Lord. It is left to Mary to tell the disciples that she has seen the Lord. Mary Magdalene is the first witness of the resurrection, the earliest person to see the risen Christ. He sends her back to tell the, the, the disciples what she has seen. She becomes the apostle to the apostles. But despite Mary's good news, the disciples have remained at home, socially isolated, their doors locked in fear throughout that first Easter day. This is the second consecutive Easter that our churches are empty and our church doors have been locked in fear, this time in fear that church services may be super spreader events. What is the dominant feeling this Easter morning? Fear or faith? Writing in The Guardian last week, John Harris talks about the way the year of lockdown has brought with it the sudden fear of serious illness and death and the sense of all of it being wholly random. When they filled their census forms earlier this month, John Harris and his partner ticked the no religion box. Later, though, he admitted, he felt a pang of envy as he wondered how religious believers were feeling. He writes, like millions of other faithless people, I have not even the flimsiest of narratives to project onto what has happened, nor any real vocabulary with which to talk about the profundities of life and death. In the first phase of the pandemic, Googling the word prayer increased by 50%. An Easter service led by the Archbishop of Canterbury from his kitchen table attracted five million viewers, described by the Church of England as the largest congregation in its history. As the pandemic lockdown continued, the symbols of religion made very visible recoveries, have come back to life, have given people new ways of finding, exploring, and expressing meaning in life. That exploration ranges from a renewed interest in the second series of Fleabag and its explorations of ethics in an age of individualism to a startling surge 
in the popularity of early Christian composers such as William Byrd and Palestrina, and to virtual pilgrimages to a degree, according to a leader in The Guardian, that would have astonished Geoffrey Chaucer. The fear of the apostles, locked away in isolation in their homes that first Easter day, ought to speak to the fear of people in this lockdown era, looking for real ways with which to talk about the profundities of life and death. Somehow, on this Easter morning, I find this empty church speaks to me of the empty grave on the first Easter morning. The Easter church must be a community that, after the lockdown, is found willing to grapple with the great issues of life. People do not want to be alone. They are seeking community that responds to the authentic questions of life, death, love, anxiety, longing, and the search for meaning. The task in mission for the post-lockdown church is to rush back like Mary and the other women, to rush back and to fill the empty places in the core of people, seeking a real vocabulary with which to talk about the profundities of life and death. Christ is risen.